Hello. This is a video test. Hello. In this video, we may discuss planned obsolescence. And what I want to show in this video is examples of things built to last. You know, these days, a lot of things are built to break. You notice how a lot of today's products break down so soon, are so cheaply made, are so horribly cheaply made, how they don't last that long. I was reading up on the internet and reading about things about people telling their stories about their experiences with planned obsolescence, basically. People would talk about refrigerators and things that were lasting long time periods, 30, 40 years, or 20, even 25 or something like that, years. Or washing machines that had, you know, lasted 40 or so years and then them getting a modern one and it lasting maybe five years. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> a lot of modern things don't last as long as a lot of things commonly did back in the day. Now some people will say, well, they bought the higher priced, better made ones. Some people's arguments were that time has caused all the not made to last things to die off, I guess. And the remaining ones, as one person put, I don't remember what thread this was from or anything. I was just reading a random thread on the internet. So I can't put the exact source, but I can. I remember one person said that the stuff, you know, was weeded out or something like that. That you that the stuff that remained was the best of the best. His argument was that there was good stuff and terrible stuff back then, and that everything that lasts now was the best of the best. He said the best of the best. Now I can say one thing. That is not true. Because a lot of things that are still around are not even close to the best of the best, but still work. Most of you know I collect vintage tape recorders, especially reel to reel portables. Those are my favorite. But in the collecting of that, some of them are very good. For instance, the UHER 4000 report. And there's a lot of other ones that are pretty good but not high-end. But there are also examples of ones that would have been the cheap ones, the El Cheapo. The ones that would be, you know, would not be even close to the brink of best of best. Not even close to good even. Some of them are such horrible quality, but still work. I'll show you some examples. So let's take a look at this recorder right here. This is one of the El Cheapo types, primarily made of plastic. You can even see that some plastic had broke right here, so I wrapped duct tape around it to hold it together. It is very lightweight. 
It has very few parts inside, and as you'll see, it only has one screw to hold it together, aside from this kind of thing where it kind of locks into place. But you can easily take it apart after removing the screw. I don't think I had to replace any components in this unit. I put batteries in it. And this machine uses the simplest method of recording, the simplest of circuitry, or a very simple circuitry, and a very simple drive system called the rim drive system. But this machine, although over 40 years old, is not even close to the best of the best, but it still works. I can even load a tape on there and show you firsthand. This is a recording done on the C or Claricon rim drive, three inch reel to reel tape recorder. And this is to show that even though something may not be of the highest grade or quality for back in the day, but it could still last. So this is showing something that's over 40 years old that isn't of the well-made types, you could say, but it still lasts. This will be recorded on the 15th of December, 2012. I'm looking forward to the 21st. Anyway, there was a, that short of interruption bit earlier was I accidentally moved the knob to record instead of rewind, I mean, instead of stop. See, so it's so easy to flip over to record. But I can have the button raised. That's a different. That's a different recorder's recording. The slower one you just heard is a different recorder's recording. So you could hear that even. You could hear this thing wow, still works. Obviously, this example showed. Obviously, this example showed that um, it's not just the best of the best that survive still will last. And of course, one may argue, well, you only just showed one example. Well, I've got other examples, too. Some that were working right off the bat, some that required minimal repair to get it to work, such as uh, putting in a new battery compartment for one because of corrosion, or replacing some bad capacitors, or cleaning rubber, or something like that. Minimal repairs. Now here's an example of um, one of the less cheap ones. Still isn't top of the line, but it's definitely an example of one that's actually well made. And you could say built to last. This one's definitely built to last. The recording quality is not that good, but it's very well made. Although the outer case is plastic, the inner mechanism uses lots of metal and does, and does not use a single belt for any of the drives. It is all driven by idler wheels. All idler driven, no belts. This machine has had no servicing aside from putting some oil on the motor and possibly cleaning the head. Other than that, it has had no servicing whatsoever. But this unit which is from 1959, that's right, 1959, that's 53 years old, still runs. So I will be putting a tape in and showing the machine that it still can record and play a tape, even with the original electrolytic capacitors in this example. By the way, for those who don't know, this is a Phonotrix recorder. These pop up on eBay a lot and I recommend you get one for your collection if you collect machines like this. I've got three units, one like this one, and then a, a, a couple of other small units. It's the smaller type. 
which is basically just this unit without the extra speaker and stuff. And um, the other two units also work, both off original parts too. And one of them, believe it or not, has lots of rust in from battery corrosion. And some of the rust has, or corrosion has gone on to the circuitry. And not this one, but another one. And believe it or not, even with all that corrosion and damage, it still works. So now I just want to give you an audio example, an actual audio recording example of a 53-year-old portable wheel reel tape recorder made in Germany that still works off original parts. Basically, a machine that thought planned obsolescence. A machine, of course, what I'm talking about here is when planned obsolescence is used to design something with the intent of it breaking prematurely, such as when an iPod has a battery that doesn't last very long, or when a printer has a chip in it, which will literally, um, after printing 1,800 pages, no, 18,000 pages, tell a printer, that's enough, you have a, quote, problem, you need to get it to the serviceman, and of course, then they'll charge you more to fix it than to get a whole new printer, which doesn't make sense, when... What really went on is a chip counted the pages, and after it reached the count, it terminated printer usage. And after the man re uh, reset the counter chip from software he designed, the printer worked fine again. He did not design the software. I misspoke there. I meant downloaded. That was a very good example of planned obsolescence. And that example is from the documentary, The Light Bulb Conspiracy also known as Pyramids of Waste. So anyway, I recommend you watch that documentary. It is fascinating. Anyway, the year is 2012. This is a modern day recording. I already said the word iPod, so you know this wasn't recorded years ago. You know this was recorded just today. So anyway, hope you enjoy. So, that shows here a 53-year-old uh, tape recorder that's not one of the best of the best either because they're one that's, that sound a lot better than this one but it's, it's still a it's one that's still well made very well made and um, it lasted quite well here's another example of a very well made unit which is also working very well off the original parts now, of course, there are many machines in my collection who that, that did need repair. Some didn't need very much repair and was very straightforward. There were others that needed a heck of One machine I spent over seven hours of time to repair. So some machines don't work or work fully right off the bat. But a lot of machines, or at least a good number of machines, do work right off the bat, such as the last two that I showed you and this unit right here. This unit right here is a machine designed to be used in schools. So, it, of course, it's got a little bit of extra well-madeness to it, although it doesn't mean the others aren't well-made either. But it's definitely well made um, to withstand school usage. And this probably didn't have any, if any, at all planned obsolescence to it. Of course, this would have zero planned obsolescence in the way of being built to break. The other kind of planned obsolescence is just designing something um, with a certain style or amount of features and then coming out with one that has more features or a different style. But they did do that back in the day, except back in the day they didn't make them to break. They just said, oh, here's a new one, oh, here's a new one or something like that. And it wasn't the same. But I'm, I'm, I'm having more thoughts that there was probably less of that going on with school equipment because schools probably weren't going after the newest style of machines anyway. 
They wanted a, a machine that would work and get the job done for class presentations and such. So this machine is probably over 40 years old and it still works. And um, I recorded that using the recorder. I did not make the song, though. The song is by Not Only Bones. It's called Last Lift. What I'm showing here is this old machine whose electrolytic capacitors and drive belt and counter belt are all still good. 4.06 amps. myself doing some circuit analysis to homework but I just want to show that this unit still runs um, and it runs well and the amplifier is very strong it can go extremely loud and also this thing sensitivity um, can be like during recording with the microphone at least with this microphone here using this this recorder this thing can get ultra sensitive, like ultra sensitive. By the way, this unit is made in the U.S., except that the, um, the mechanical system in it, the transport system, is a Japanese system by Akai, which is very well made, very solid. Uh, some stories I could tell about my own experiences with some things failing or other similar things with planned obsolescence or you know probably fit into that category one is um, lifespan of a toaster we have a toaster oven not the type with the two slots on top but the type where you open up a, a opening and stick the piece of bread in there and cook it like a little miniature oven anyway we had got a modern unit some years ago not that you know sometime in the mid 2000s probably a modern unit by Sunbeam which used electronic control it had a circuit board inside chips and everything LCD screen electronic control toaster I don't remember how long it lasted but I remember that it didn't last that long it probably lasted a year or two and then it gave out and so it was all taken apart and I got the circuit board out don't know where the circuit board is we've since moved but I remember that circuit board was it looked quite burnt and you know um, uh, electronics like that with chips and whatnot and uh, high temperature don't get along well so that's not a very good design um, having an electronic system to control the toaster. So we have um, the current toaster we have now also is a modern one, but so far it has been performing well. Now I expect our current toaster, our current modern toaster, to last considerably longer than the electronically controlled one we had earlier. And here is my reasoning for that. The one we have currently, although new, although I don't remember when exactly we bought it. We bought it, you know, maybe maybe four years or so ago or five years ago. It still works. But the thing is, is that it does not use an electronic control like that last one we had. It uses a mechanical, older style control with a knob that you turn and it actually has a mechanical timer in it and it rings a bell whenever it's done toasting. So it actually uses an older technology type design, but I expect since it uses the simple mechanical 
design with simple electrical wiring, I imagine, I expect that toaster to last longer than the electronically controlled type. I'll also tell you the story of a big screen TV we have. And by big screen, I don't, re I don't mean one of those modern day widescreen, flat screen jobs. I mean the big screen TV like you knew growing up. We know when you might go to your neighbor's house or your friend's house and they have a big screen TV referring to a rear projection TV. The type that is really large and really deep and on the inside has the three projector CRTs which project an image onto a mirror in the back of the TV which then project back onto the screen. We have one of those TVs which was given to us from a friend for free. It's as old as I am. It's 21 years old. Made in 1991. It's a Pioneer unit. When we got the unit, the unit still worked except it had a problem. The bottom of the image was shifted up by about three, in, three inches and there, so there was just a black space three inches up from the bottom of the screen. Then there was the image. The middle portion of the image was normal. The bottom portion of the image where it was shifted up, the image was actually crushed, was scrunched a little bit. The top part of the image was, was stretched a little bit and the top part of the actual image itself went above where the actual screen was so you couldn't see quite at the top of the image. Basically it's like the projection angle was shifted up some. So we went to the repair shop, a place called Ford Electronics, and we, um, we described the problem to the repairman. We didn't take the TV there or anything. We simply described the problem to the repairman. He said that we could pay us $400 for us to replace the board, referring to the circuit board, a very large circuit board. Um, board the circuit board I have here is not from the TV, but I'm simply using it as a reference for size. It was about as big as this circuit board, maybe not as much square, May, it might be a slight, slightly smaller but it's about as big as this job here, and this is a pretty big circuit board, came from an arcade game. Anyway, of course we declined on the offer to pay them $400 to replace the entire circuit board for the TV. I don't know exactly how much the uh, big screen, or the, well, the flat screen for these days, TVs of today cost on the cheapest. I don't know if they'll be less than $400 or not, but the point I'm trying to make is they wanted $400 for a, to replace the entire board. Well, we weren't going to buy that, so my brother looked online. Now this was back in 2000, um, probably six, maybe late five, probably six, 2006, I think. Anyway, my brother looked online and described the problem. It turned out somebody else on the internet had the exact same problem with the exact same model TV. I don't think this was necessarily planned obsolescence happening here. I just think it's a common problem issue because what it was was a leaky capacitor. So the person on the internet who had the same problem told which two capacitors to replace. Even the part number listed on the circuit board, you know, it says C and then some number to number each part. Well, he said replace like an 8.2 microfarad, or maybe it was 0.82, and a 10 microfarad. I didn't have the 8.2 or, or 0.82, whatever that one was. I did have a 10 microfarad, a very common value. So, I opened up the back of the TV, took the circuit board out, located the capacitor that was said to be bad. I replaced it with a capacitor that I already had, but the cost of the capacitor wouldn't be very much if I had to buy it new. And I put that single, tiny, simple to replace, as long as you have soldering skills, it's not a problem, little capacitor, standard component, I don't think this was planned obsolescence happening here. It's just a basic um, breakdown because the capacitors go bad 
you know, anyway. So I replaced the capacitor and bingo, the TV works just fine now. So that's an annoyance I have there with the repair business. Instead of the repair business looking in with their meters or something and checking for bad caps or even searching online and finding that very post and saying, oh yeah, we got a 10 microfarad capacitor, that's no problem. It will cost you about 25 cents. No. Now don't, now don't quote me on the 25 cents. That's just an estimate. That's just a guess, basically. But they wanted $400 to replace an entire circuit board about this big when only one component like this one right here was the problem. That is ridiculous. That is really ridiculous. So, there you could hear a story about not necessarily planned obsolescence, but something that's kind of plays into it is when a repair company charges a ridiculous amount of money to repair to repair a very small problem. Or also, of course, it goes for whenever, say, you have a printer or some modern device which breaks down and it's a very common scene, from what I've heard, for the repairman to charge as much or more money to fix the product or to replace a part in the product than to get the, enti uh, the entire product new, an entire new product. And that's obviously flawed. There's obviously a flaw there. Because realistically, if you're buying the new product, it's got that same part in it, plus many others. So, technically, the replacement part should cost a heck of a lot less than the product itself, but no. And it's because people want money. Now, for another story on planned obsolescence and things being ridiculous, um... For my brother's birthday, my mom got him a device which is basically, it's a, he got two pieces to it. A FM radio with clock, which was waterproof, or water resistant maybe, and to, could go in the shower, it was held on to the wall by suction cups. It also came with a short range FM, FM transmitter, so you could say plug your iPod in and uh, transmit the music so he could listen to it in the shower. Bright idea, sure, yes. Um, so anyway, we bought that product, brand new. This was this year, earlier, actually no, it might have been last year. Might have been, whatever. Within this year or last year, it was recently. So we got this device, uh, opened up the package. We, My mom even got batteries for it, so fresh batteries, everything. So. I um, put batteries in the radio receiver part that goes in the shower. That worked fine, good. Um, tune stations, just fine. So then I opened up the little transmitter part. Opened up meaning opening up the package, not the device itself. So um, pop batteries in it. Try to turn it on. The little indicator light doesn't come on. Try putting a source or something. It does not work. Read the manual. Make sure I'm doing things right. Turn it on, it's supposed to light up, turn it on, nothing happens. The radio transmitter part did not work at all. It was fresh out of the package. It was fresh out of the package. And from the get-go, it was broken. From the get-go, the thing didn't even work. Don't they get inspected at the factories? Aren't they supposed to pass tests before they get sold? And then you go around buying something and it don't even work fresh out of the box? Where? Where have we gone to? This is ridiculous. This is outrageous. 
So, yeah, my mom took it back to the store. Thing didn't even work fresh out of the box. Wouldn't even turn on. That was, that was stupid. My brother got also a Zune MP3 player. Uh, it was uh, in the box for an amount of time before he opened it. Um, maybe a couple of years, three years maybe. But it was in the box and everything. And, and according to my brother, the thing never worked or he could never get it to work or something. Uh, plus, my brother had an iPod, and uh, it, it didn't last but maybe two years, and now it's no good. It's ridiculous. When my brother first got a Wii back in 2006, uh, it was like the day he got it, or the day after the day he got it, or some time shortly after he got it, maybe a week or less. A very short time after he got his Wii, it dropped, like fell off the TV or something. And then it wouldn't even load a disc after that. He had to send in the Wii back and get a new one. So it, you know, one simple drop and a thing's no good. It's ridiculous how cheaply things are made. Not just that, but I'm talking about not just things being made cheaply. I'm talking about things being literally made to break. It's it's very ridiculous. It's it's just it's stupid. It's it's I hate it. I want to show you even another example of one of those old cheaply made but lasting the test of time machines. Here's another old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from the 1960s. One of those rim drive units. It still works from off original parts. Actually, I think I had to replace a couple of capacitors, but that's standard procedure for something old. For a reader reel tape recorder, September 30th, 2012. It would have been recorded on this unit, too. As you can hear, it still works. Tape recorder, September 30th, 2012. Crystal microphone. Um, I'm not going to show it here, but I also made a video last year or so um, showing a couple of pencil sharpeners comparing an old exact, oh no, a modern exacto pencil sharpener to an old Panasonic sharpener. And um, it was a cheaper sharpener, and it was terrible. And the um, the old Panasonic I have, a, which still works by the way, it performs a heck of a lot better. Yeah, we used to have a space heater, one of those little ones with a fan in it, made by the Holmes Company, H-O-L-M-E-S, I believe, back in the early 2000s, and it lasted uh, maybe a few years, and it broke in, I think, sometime in the mid-2000s. It didn't last all that long. And um, it just finally one day just died, just kind of just quit working. And then I want to show you. I got this little unit here, probably from the 80s. Um, an old uh, patent heater. Patent heater plus fan. It has a fan and three heat, three heat settings. Yes, it does have a plastic case. So, it's probably not one of the highest grade heaters made. But, um, it still works very well. I've been running it all night. Quite often. Got this, um, during the summer. Got it at a estate sale. Only paid a dollar for it. And it... Ah, yes. And it blows very pleasant heat. Very nice.
obviously outlasted that home seater. It's older than the home seater, it's older than me, and it still works. I was at my friend's dorm, and in the main room with that place, there's a uh, flat screen TV. I think it was a, an LG and um, maybe Vizio. I think it was LG. And um, it was uh, manufactured in 2007, as it said on the back of the unit. So it's five years old, and it does still work, but it's got, you know, one or two of those vertical lines on the screen. I'm sure many of you have um, seen or heard about the problems of a lot of the flat screen TVs having the uh, vertical lines. Just a little vertical line down the screen like that. Some of them, they'll have some, a few spaced apart evenly by even, in, by even increments. Is only five years old. It got these vertical lines on the screen, which is annoying. And I'm sure it cost a lot when it was new. It's a flat screen for Pete's sake. Wide screen, everything. Pretty good size. And here is an old TV from 1979. It's older technology, of course. You know, it's got the CRT and everything. And it still works. Oh, I had one problem with it. It wouldn't turn on one day. Actually, whenever I first got it from the flea market back in 2005. But it was easy to fix because all it was was a blown fuse. So that's just a fuse. And I replaced the fuse. The TV works just fine. It's been, I've been using it a lot. And it's been working flawlessly ever since I put that new fuse in there. And um, even the indicator light there still works for these channels. And it... It, it's been, it serves me very well. It's a very good unit, Zenith System 3. Got to give a shout out to one of the YouTubers named Spats Bear because he's got one of these units. And he likes it too. His is in very good shape too, cosmetically. Although his is channels, his is channels, channel light is burned out, but not really that big a deal. I've got other old TVs that still work. Got an old Sony Trinitron TV from the 70s that still works older than that widescreen TV but still works no vertical lines as far as that argue the argument that the guy had that I brought up earlier on in this video about only the best of the best surviving here's another example of um, something that definitely was not the best of the best it was one of the cheaper capstan drive units um, it's not working off all original parts. I had to replace the drive belt because the original had stretched a little bit too much. So I put a new uh, belt in there and now it works just fine. So off almost all original parts aside from the belt. And even though this machine uses lots of plastic and stuff, unlike many machines of, it, of its time period that used metal, this uses lots of plastic. But it's at, at least it's a still made sturdily and well enough that it, after replacing the belt, except for that dang take-up reel issue which started recently, whenever it's vertical that is, the take-up reel doesn't like to turn because it's such a weak drive. I just need to increase the tension. But it's still a workable machine. Like Sigmund Freud, like psychology, fMRI, she's it. Baked snack crackers. So, it's still a fixable machine. It was not hard to fix. It's a basic belt issue. Pause. On my desktop computer that I got in 2008, it was maybe only but a few days, if not even a day or so, a very short time that I had had the computer on the front of the computer, there is a place where you could put such things as an SD card or a memory stick or other similar card devices into slots in the front of the computer. Maybe a day or two or not very long after I got the computer, that, that part stopped working. I don't know if it was just because of not putting safer remove hardware and then unplugging it or what, but it just quit 
reading any cards. Not it didn't even detect anything, or you know, it just didn't work. I got a separate card reader that we have had for since the mid 2000s by Sandisk. It's for reading uh, memory sticks, the Sony memory stick. Um, you can unplug cards out of it without doing safer remove hardware, and the the little drive that you you know that plugs into the computer of course if you want to remove it from the USB drive you want to do safer remove hardware but to remove the actual memory stick from the drive you don't have to do that so obviously the technology easily exists to have a place to plug in and unplug a memory sticks with, with, without causing any problems but of course the front loading drive built into the computer just didn't last worth anything. Piece of crap. Piece of freaking crap. You know a lot of modern day printers don't last that long. It's a funny thing because I was at the college the other day returning a rental textbook and at the little place where the people uh, are to receive the rental textbooks uh, they were using an old dot matrix printer, probably made in the early 90s, I would imagine, or somewhere around there. The thing was still working, printing out dot matrix prints on that kind of paper that's got the little holes on each side. It was amazing they were still using that ancient technology, but it's just one of the examples of one of those older printers outlasting, I'm sure, a whole good number of modern ones. I'm sure many of you are familiar with washer and dryer units that last 40 or so years or more. Um, I remember my, my mom, and I think dad was still alive at that point too, maybe, went to get a washing uh, washer and dryer set, modern one. And um, I remember my mom saying that the person at the store said to only expect eight years of service out of them. It's ridiculous. If we're supposed to be improving technology, wouldn't one expect a moderner unit to last longer than the units of the 60s, 70s or so? Shouldn't the progress of technology make products that can last longer? But what we find is, although technology is progressing, where a lot of things are becoming more and more ridiculous and wasteful. You may have been able to go to a store back in the 60s or so and expected 40 years or so of service. And now you go eight years. What has happened? What has happened? What has happened? They want money. Money, money, money. The stove in our house, I believe, is as old as the house itself, which was built in 1968. The stove in our house still works flawlessly. When I was reading those threads on the computer, I've heard of stoves which ran, I think if I remember correctly, one of the guys said that there was a stove that ran for three to four years and then broke. That is pathetic. That is just pathetic. Now some modern things can last at least up till now if taken care of. This cell phone is about five years old. It's a Motorola Razor. But it still works. You can even see a picture of a reel to reel that I took whenever I first got the cell phone. It ain't no smartphone, but it still works. Although on a side note, I am quite angry because I can't even check voicemails on the dang thing, though. 
because I was putting my own passcode into it and then it called me an unauthorized caller it said uh, it even said my own phone number it said I'm unauthorized to check my own voicemail with my own passcode so no more voicemail checking and that in itself is so enraging it's just ridiculous and come up on that note I got an old Panasonic answering machine uses a dual cassette system of course we don't even have a home phone line now just sad so I can't really use an answering machine for its intended purpose but did he ever have to type in a passcode to check that thing nope I could have checked my messages if it was on something like that but now since it's on my cell phone and I try putting my password in a bunch of times it just when an hour whenever I text my own password my own password it says from my own phone number that I'm an unauthorized person to be checking my own voicemail that is there is no word actually there were there at least that I know of, there is no word to describe how ridiculous and annoying that is and just to say that old Panasonic answering machine that I mentioned the thing weighs a ton and it's very solid and it even uses like solenoid driven controls like you push the button and you hear this ka chunk as like a solenoid pulls the heads up onto the transport it's like very well made it's made to answer many, 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 many messages. <laughs> People watching this video, please, I know everyone at the end of their videos like rate, comment, subscribe, and then they're done. And I'm sure that gets very old and very cliche after a while. So you'll probably be like stopping the video now thinking don't go there. I've been there too many times. But anyway, I'm just asking you. I'm not asking you to subscribe. I'm just asking you two things. Leave a comment on the video saying any of your rants or feelings about things uh, breaking and things not being made to last or stories about things being made to last or, or post video responses showing things either breaking prematurely or lasting a long time or things like that. I know Spats Bear's got some good examples. He's talked about toasters <laughs> where a modern toaster would use electronic controls and electronics would get burned up and it's and it's crap and doesn't last long and about how he has an old toaster from the 70s or something that still works or something like that or or him with his fans. <laughs> Him, him, him and his friend Emerson Colley getting fans, modern fans from the store, which are so cheaply made and flimsy and crushing the thing. It's so hilarious. <laughs> So, the land of Durabrand, that's another thing, the land of Durabrand. So, anyway, YouTubers, send in your video responses. So, your examples of planned obsolescence and action, of things breaking, or things being made to last, your annoyances, your opinions, your thoughts, your feelings. I would love to be able to see your responses and rants on planned obsolescence and stories about things breaking really soon or you know stuff like that because <sighs> yeah it's entertaining to watch but also it, st it says a statement it tells people it tells people about this ridiculous thing planned obsolescence it lets people know important material I mean in this day and age so many things break so quickly oh throw it away buy a new one throw it away buy a new one it's such a common thing today sometimes even throwing a working vintage item in favor of getting a modern item because it's HD or 
it's newer or looks newer or something like that. I mean, it's sad. It's sad. It's so sad. Yeah, anyway. Oh, my VCR is blanking tape on the LCD because it's getting close to the end of the tape. And this is little VCR is a Sony Evo 210. You can't see it, but it's EVO-210. It's a professional grade Video 8 VCR. Works very nicely. Paid $2 for it at a thrift store. It's what I'm using to record this video. Now, thanks to John Clark, that I have a capture card. So anyway, anyway guys, share your stories, your comments, videos of your broken and working and whatever devices. Get the word out, get the stories out, and let people know what's going on. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see some good responses, some great stories, some stories of annoyance, stories of things being built to break. Bye-bye.